Expression vocabulary. This is kind of an introductory lesson, um, or we're also a, like a cumulative lesson, talking about all the important fraction vocabularies. And we're going to break down six different things that you may come across whenever working through a fraction unit. So let's start with the first one. This is just a plain old fraction. Now the top number is called your numerator, and your bottom number is called your denominator. And what this means is, uh, I always tell people that your bottom number, imagine, this is a, a first thing, two sixths is a fraction, which means it's less than a whole. So imagine you order a whole pizza, and it's like one of those cafeteria kind of square rectangle pizzas. The bottom number tells you how many slices it's cut into. So if I have a rectangular pizza and I go to look at it, it's cut into six even pieces. And then my top number tells you how many that you're eating. So I'm going to eat two of them. Also, I'd like to say that it doesn't matter which two. Normally, people uh, are going to shade in the first two this way or shade in the first two this way. But as long as the fractions are the same size, you can shade in like any one of them, really. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is this is another visual. This visual is two-thirds. But this is like breaking down the pizza you're eating one at a time. So imagine whenever you're eating the pizza, you're going to eat this slice first and then this slice. So what you basically did was eat one third of the pizza and then you ate another third of the pizza, which equals the whole thing, which is the two thirds. These two numbers are called your unit fractions. This tells you like the pieces and the parts one at a time. Your unit fraction is always going to have one as your numerator. The next thing is called a mixed number. This is whenever you have a whole number right here and a fraction put together. So this is saying I had three whole pizzas. I can draw three whole pizzas. One, two, three, and I ate all of them. And then I ordered another pizza, and I only ate half of it. So I have my three holes, those are right here, and then I have my half that you can see over here. It's like smushing together a whole number and a fraction together. Now the next one is called, so I guess it would help if I put the, the definition of what it is, this, or the vocabulary term, this is called a mixed number. You're mixing up your holes and your fractions together. This next one is called an improper fraction. Now the reason it's called an improper fraction is because normally your top number, your numerator, is supposed to be smaller than your denominator. <coughs> Excuse me. But imagine you order a pizza. It's broken up into fourths, and you are trying to eat seven slices. Well, one, two, three, four, I don't have enough slices. I need to order a whole nother pizza that's still broken up into fourths, and then I need to try to eat my seven. I've already eaten one, two, three, four, so I eat five, six, seven. That is an example of an improper fraction. The last one, these are equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions, equal, you know, means equal. They are equivalent, meaning that Although it might look different in cut up amounts, but one half and two fourths are the same amount. So you can have two fractions that have way different numerators and denominators, but they're still equal. And the last one that doesn't get talked about quite as much, these are called your fraction tiles. So if I was to shade in this whole thing, that would be like one whole. Or I can make one whole by having two halves. Or I can make a whole by having, I'll do different colors, do blue. By having two thirds. Let's see if I can do a brighter color two-thirds, and those are called fraction tiles, where you can see like the value 
through visuals, and they're kind of stacked up on top of each other. Fraction tiles, sometimes they're called fraction strips. So this is a good lesson to go over with fraction vocabulary, either at the beginning or the end. It's a good way to see how much you already know about fractions, or it's a good way to address any common misconceptions.